Let's go to Sarah McNamara now, who's the Chief Executive of the Australian Energy Council. She joins me live from Melbourne to talk about the ongoing energy crisis. Thanks for joining us again, Sarah. I'm interested in this discussion and the guidelines going around for the so-called capacity mechanism, how all governments can really work to try and keep reliable or backup energy in the system. This is undoubtedly going to lead to subsidies to keep gas and coal-fired energy in the system, isn't it? Well, the capacity mechanism will operate like an insurance policy for the market and it will mean, as we're transitioning to a net zero future, uh, that we'll have the right kind of generation in the market at any given point in time so we can ensure supply stays on. And, of course, because it's an insurance policy, like any insurance policy, uh, you do have to pay for that um, insurance, so it does introduce um, that element into the market. It's the latest uh, iteration of this sort of scheme, but it, it, if you'll just let me explain in simple terms what's going on here, I'd love to get your comment, because we've had two decades of policies, really, through renewable energy targets and the like, designed to boost renewables and drive coal and gas out of the system, to drive fossil fuels out of the system. But now we're saying because of that, because that's working, what we have to do is look at something like a capacity mechanism to try and subsidise coal and gas to keep them in the system. Well, I, I'm not sure it's entirely like that. We're certainly at the cutting edge of renewables investment in our grid. Um, but acknowledging that we don't yet have the kind of long-term storage options available um, such that we could push coal and gas out of the system completely. Now, the market operator is anticipating um, that by 2030 we should uh, see the departure of quite a lot of coal and gas. But what's really important is between now and, uh, and then and into the 2030s, we have enough capacity in the system uh, because we're not yet ready to move uh, to a 100% renewable grid. But it is as simple as that, as that at its heart, isn't it? The, the climate policies, the, the uh, emissions reductions policies are aimed at forcing out coal and gas and something like a capacity mechanism is designed to try and keep them in there because we still need them. I don't think they're aimed at forcing out coal and gas. I think they acknowledge that in order to meet a net zero by 2050 target uh, and to acknowledge the fact that uh, coal plants across the grid are ageing and coming to the end of their natural lives, uh, we are going to need to contemplate how to firm up generation uh, into the future. Now, you mentioned storage. There's a lot of focus on that. Uh, the incoming government's talking a lot about storage. We need more transmission and more storage, says Chris Bowen. Um, there is simply not the technology available to store the renewable energy at the levels we need, is there? Well, there is some technology available and we are doing well uh, with pumped hydro and battery storage. But it is true, I think, to say that our storage technologies haven't quite kept pace with the development of renewable technologies themselves. So they've got a bit of catching up to do and that's why, uh, as we all can see, um, coal and gas will have a role to play in the immediate future of our electricity grid. You just have a, let's just have a look at a little of what uh, the Climate and uh, Energy Minister Chris Bowen had to say today. The Energy Security Board is saying a mix of technologies should be in the mix. It, it, we, of course, existing coal fire generators have to be repaired, and they have been repaired, and they are being repaired. It's the size of the challenge that we have that they are in such disrepair, uh, and that this has been a, a crisis primarily led by the, by the failure of coal fire power generators. I just find this sort of argument just so, so hard to deal with, Sarah, because, of course, there's been little investment in, uh, in upgrading and, and, and keeping coal-fired generators in, in, in a good state of repair because they're being forced out of the market. A number of them have closed down. Others are bringing forward their retirement plans. How does a government expect people to invest in them when they're being run out of town? Well, I think investment in our market's been pretty challenging for about a decade now. We've had uh, an absence of, of policy uh, and policy that's kind of come, come and gone almost as quickly as it arrived. Uh, really, though, coal plant operators particularly are always concerned about uh, the state their units are in. Um, and it was just unfortunate last week um, that we had some unplanned outages for really essential maintenance at some of these ageing plants. All right, now, you, we talked about storage. You talk about pumped hydro. We know that can work, but you've got to have the right environment. It takes a long while to build a dam and get all that set up. None of it happening in Australia yet. Uh, Snowy 2.0 is a long way off. Batteries are only good for sort of short term and, uh, and obviously for 
stabilising the infrastructure. But the, the other big hope that Chris Bowen talks about is massively expanding transmission to link in more renewable projects so there's more options. If the wind's not blowing in the southern highlands, it might be blowing up in the, in the Atherton, Atherton tablelands and the like. But it doesn't matter how much transmission you put in, you're still exposed to the intermittency of renewables, aren't you? Well, there's no question that we're bringing, prog progressively speaking, more renewables into our system over the next couple of decades. And to do that, we're going to need to build transmission. Um, what we're very keen to see, though, is that transmission is invested in uh, in a really thoughtful way and that cost-benefit analyses are run to make sure we're not uh, gold-plating um, a transmission system when we don't need to. Uh, we really do need to continue to have an eye on the affordability of our electricity grid as we're moving to this lower emissions future. Uh, well, we'll keep talking on this, Sarah, because there are so many problems yet to be solved and uh, uh, it's, this is not a crisis that's going to be fixed this week, is it? Well, actually, I should say that it's really moving in the right direction now, Chris. I mean, this time last week, we had about 30% of that stabilising coal plant out in the NEM. Uh, today, it's more like about 15%. So we've seen about 2,000 megawatts come back online in the last few days. That's really encouraging. The system's a lot more stable. We are anticipating if things continue to move in this positive direction, um, the market operator might uh, be confident enough to allow the market to return to more or less normal operation later this week. Thanks for joining us, Sarah. I appreciate it. Sarah McNamara there from uh, the Energy Council.